On a misty morning in the village of Woolpit, the settlers gathered in the square in anticipation for the search to begin. It had been quite some time since the mysterious children had arrived, and they deserved the chance to find the place they longed for the most, a mysterious place, a land where the sun does not rise, a place they called home. The 12th century, in the heart of England's countryside, lay the peaceful village of Woolpit, a place where time seemed to move gently and the rhythm of life was dictated by the seasons. The bustling villagers going about their daily routines while children play by the village well, an ordinary day was about to be turned upside down. In the fields, a farmer, whether driven by duty or mere curiosity, meandered amidst the swaying wheat. With practiced eyes that knew the land intimately, he spotted a peculiar sight in the distance. Two figures, almost otherworldly in their presence, stood at the fringe of the clearing. The farmer, wiping sweat from his brow, squinted against the sunlight to observe these figures more closely. The two figures' skin, a grassy hue reminiscent of fresh leaves kissed by dew, set them apart in a way that defied explanation. These were the green children, a boy and a girl with eyes that held both innocence and a frightening shiver from the unknown. Their clothing, though tattered, lit up with vibrant hues from the shimmering sun. The children remained rooted as if planted in the very earth beneath their feet, eyes wide as they observed the world around them. Lost, as if cast adrift from the familiar, they seemed to absorb the sights, sounds, and scents of Woolpit with a mixture of bewilderment and wonder. Yet for all their strangeness, there was an air of vulnerability that drew the farmer closer, guided by compassion and the innate desire to extend a hand to those in need. With cautious steps, he approached the green-skinned children, their heartbeats echoing in rhythm with the villagers' intrigue. The farmer hesitantly guided the frightened children back the village square. The moment hung suspended in air as the children entered the village. It was a moment of astonishment and bewilderment. Villagers, frozen in their tracks, eyes widened with a mix of curiosity and disbelief. The village square, once a canvas for the ordinary, had now become a stage for the extraordinary. Whispers rustled through the crowd like leaves caught in a gentle breeze. Faces turned towards the scene, each expression a canvas painted with a different hue of emotion. Surprise, skepticism, wonder. The green children, their existence a stark contrast to the palette of Woolpit. Who were these children? Where did they come from? Mothers clutched their children a little tighter, as if protecting them from a world that had suddenly become strange and unfamiliar. As if summoned by an unspoken call, some villagers stepped forward. The brave, the curious, or perhaps the empathetic, their motivations varied, but they shared a common thread, the desire to bridge the gap between the known and the unknown. Words emerged, cautious and tentative, as if testing the air for receptiveness. The villagers spoke to the green children, their voices laced with a gentle cadence. They gestured towards the village, attempting to convey both welcome and curiosity. Yet for all their efforts, communication remained a futile task. The green children, for their part, gazed back with eyes that seemed to hold secrets untold. Their voices, though foreign to the villagers' ears, carried a melody of innocence and vulnerability that transcended linguistic barriers. Some time passed, and the children were starting to enjoy the daily explorations of this new world. The simple act of providing shelter, food, and clothing was a testament to the kindness that resided in the hearts of Woolpit's inhabitants. A kind-hearted villager, guided by an innate empathy, stepped forward to take on the role of caring for them. This individual became a guardian, a guiding presence for the children as they navigated a world that was both wondrous and bewildering. Over time, living under the guidance of the villagers, a transformation of the children was starting to take place. The vibrant green hue that had once set the children apart from all they encountered started to mellow and fade. It was as if the very essence of Woolpit, the sun, the wind, and the stories whispered through generations, infused their beings with a more human-like color. Within the embrace of the Woolpit community, the children's days were woven with moments of discovery and the ordinary. They began to mimic the village's activities, joining in the rituals of work and play. Laughter, once a foreign sound, became familiar as they learned the cadence of human interaction. The village embarked on a patient journey of teaching and education. Conversations became lessons, shared smiles and exchanged glances the building blocks of understanding. In whispers and laughter, the green children's vocabulary began to blossom and flourish. 
the subtleties of human mannerisms began to form and take shape. Yet, as the children sought to share their own tale, they found themselves navigating a labyrinth of linguistic challenge. Their story, woven with threads of mystery and enigma, proved elusive to capture in a language of infancy to the children. In fragments and gestures they painted a picture, a journey through darkness, guided by the distant chime of bells, leading them from a realm of green to the embrace of Woolpit's arms. A ripple of curiosity spread through the village. With each passing day the children's story woven with equal parts fascination and puzzlement, the villagers' interest grew. The village square buzzed with speculation, theories exchanged like currency in a marketplace. Whispers floated through the air, of distant lands hidden beneath emerald canopies, of portals that bridged the realms of possibility. Woolpit, once a haven of simplicity, now found itself entwined with a mystery that painted its horizons with hues of intrigue. Time went on, days to weeks and weeks to months. The story that was fabricating unfolded like a tapestry, each thread a testament to the unbreakable bond between the extraordinary and the ordinary. With time's passing the children's understanding of the villagers' language and the villagers' comprehension of the children's story began to evolve. The mystery of the children's origins began to unravel with each day that went by. And so, as if unburdening a secret long held, the green children spoke of a place beyond the horizon of Woolpit, a realm known as St. Martin's Land. Their voices, once tentative, now resonated with a clarity that echoed through the village square. The village, wrapped in attention, listened as the children's words painted a canvas of their journey. They recounted how they had followed a distant melody, a symphony of bells that had called to them from the corners of their world. With youthful curiosity as their guide, they embarked on a path shrouded in shadows. Through an abyss of darkness they traveled. The tale told was one that created sensations for the villagers that defied human understanding. The children emerged in the embrace of Woolpit. Their explanation held a key, an enigmatic piece of the puzzle, an interdimensional portal, a bridge between the known and the unfathomable. As the green children painted word pictures of St. Martin's land, the villagers' minds were transported to a realm unlike any they had ever imagined. The very fabric of the land was woven from nature's palette, each element tinted with the vibrant green hue that had once adorned their own skin. Forests, covered with emerald leaves, stretched towards horizons that seemed to merge with the sky. Rivers crisscrossed the landscape, carrying with them melodies that danced harmoniously with the wind's embrace. The creatures of St. Martin's Land, the children recounted, were as unique as the land itself. They described creatures with wings like the leaves of trees and eyes that mirrored the shimmering stars. Creatures that seemed to share a deep, unspoken connection with the verdant tapestry of their home. Yet, amidst the beauty, their voices carried a touch of melancholy. St. Martin's Land, they shared, was a realm of solitude, a sanctuary of empty green, and so, while the villagers' minds danced with visions of this ethereal realm, the children's narrative painted a picture of both wonder and yearning, an untamed world of color, a place that had forever etched itself into their hearts. The villagers' imaginations were set alight by the children's story. Like stars punctuating the night sky, questions adorned the minds of Woolpit's villagers. The narrative of St. Martin's Land, a world painted in hues of green, Enigmatic, untamed, and untouched, stirred a curiosity that could not be denied. A spark lit up in the individuals of the village. Those with an adventurous spark needed to know more. An expedition would be mounted amongst the curious, an expedition that would take them far away from the familiar paths of Woolpit. On a misty morning in the village of Woolpit, the settlers gathered in the square in anticipation for the search to begin. The village square buzzed with a newfound energy, like bees in a field of wildflowers. The narrative of St. Martin's Land had ignited a spark of curiosity that could not be contained. A motley crew of villagers, bound not only by their shared curiosity, but also by a kinship forged through the bonds of a community that had become more than family. The caregiver, the kind-hearted soul who had nurtured the green children from the moment they stepped into Woolpit, stood at the forefront a symbol of love and protection. The path unfurled before them, a journey that would carry them beyond the boundaries of the known. Step by step they traversed through landscapes that were both breathtaking and unforgiving. 
Meadows bloomed with wildflowers. Rivers, like veins of the land, guided their way, their reflections holding secrets only the water could understand. Days turned to nights, nights turned to days as the expedition pressed on. Footprints were etched onto the canvas of the land, each a testament to the courage of those who dared to seek the mysterious St. Martin's land. It was a journey that mirrored the green children's own voyage, guided by a song of bells. Time went by, and the expedition that was once filled with enigma and curiosity had returned to the familiar soil of Woolpit. The villagers, faces etched with the lines of effort and determination, had returned with expressions filled with disappointment and resignation. The truth of St. Martin's Land remained elusive, just a mirage to the villagers, a realm that had been painted by words and dreams. The portal that bridged their world with the green children's remained as much a mystery as it had always been. In time, the expedition's echoes faded like footsteps washing away in the sand. The villagers returned to their normal routines, and the story of the green children's discovery had been passed down from generation to generation. The green children, once strangers with verdant skin, grew to become cherished members of the village, their journey of discovery forever a part of their identity. As the years passed, their memory became a thread woven into the fabric of Woolpit's folklore. So, who were the Green Children? The legend is said to have originated from the village of Woolpit in Suffolk, England. While the specific details may be embellished, it's possible that there could have been an event or encounter that gave rise to the tale. However, over centuries of retelling, the original details might have been distorted or exaggerated. The legend of the Green Children is often interpreted in several ways. Some scholars suggest that the legend may be an allegorical tale meant to convey moral or religious lessons. The green children's arrival could symbolize a spiritual journey or a transformation of perspective. The narrative might serve to encourage curiosity, openness to the unknown, and a sense of acceptance for those who might appear different. Some theories propose that the green children could have been suffering from a condition called chlorosis, which can cause a pale or greenish skin color due to a lack of proper nutrition. This could potentially explain the children's initial green appearance. The legend may have been inspired by cultural and historical events of the time, such as migration or the introduction of new people to a community. Additionally, medieval England was a time of mystery and superstition, and stories like this might have been used to explain unusual occurrences. And so the legend of the green children of Woolpit endures, a story woven with threads of mystery, curiosity, and human connection. As time moves on, the details may blur, the facts may fade, but the essence of the tale remains, carried on the wings of imagination. If you enjoyed this tale and would like to hear other stories surrounding the strange, dark, and mysterious, please hit that like button and subscribe to keep up with all content. Until next time, this is Dark Lore Discoveries.